I'm about to show you exactly how to break into tech with no money down within the next 90 days. This is legitimately the fastest path that I found to getting into the tech industry in my past 15 plus years of working inside of this industry. I've helped hundreds of people land high paying tech jobs using these exact strategies that I'm going to talk about in this video, including my student who followed these steps and landed a role paying over $90,000 within 90 days. And in this video, I'm going to give you my complete step by step blueprint that you can follow to land your first tech job. I'm going to show you how you can get certifications without spending a dime up front, the exact resume strategies that's helping people land interviews right now, the networking hack that's working better than applying to hundreds of jobs a day. I wish somebody gave me all of this information when I was trying to get started in the tech industry, but let's not waste any more time and let's get right to it. First things first, you want to spend your first 45 days focusing on getting a tech certification. Now I know it might seem a little bit crazy, but if you focus on putting in the time, mapping out the hours that you'll have to study each day, you can achieve this. And a lot of people think that you have to go and sign up for a boot camp to get a certification. But if you're somebody who's a self starter and you're willing to put in the hours yourself, you can get these certifications without spending thousands of dollars on boot camps. There are free resources that you can use right here on YouTube to study for tech certifications and really learn any tech skill that you like. You might have already heard of this person, but his name is Professor Messer and he has a free YouTube channel that covers a lot of different tech certifications. So if you just come on to YouTube and type in Professor Messer, you will see a ton of different tech certification study guides that he's already done. He does study groups every single month. So you literally can come here and look at the study groups and all of his training materials that he has for different CompTIA certifications. I believe he has information for other type of certifications as well. So if you just come here to his YouTube, you'll see all of these different courses that he has for CompTIA. You'll see the study groups and you'll see different IT career videos as well. He also has videos broken down by type of skills that you need, such as hardware to tools, command line tools, software tools, issues, performance issues. A lot of this stuff are things that you're going to need when you're first getting into tech. So this is a great YouTube channel to come at and learn the information completely for free. There are also free tech resources like Microsoft Learn and AWS Skill Builder. These different resources will allow you to learn different tech skills without actually having to go and pay for the course yet. And sometimes these companies even do free challenges where if you go through the courses that you find on Microsoft Learn, for example, at the end of that course, once you complete it, they will give you a free certification voucher for you to take an exam. So that's another way for you to get free tech certifications without coming out of pocket at all. And I know you're probably thinking, what about the certifications that I can't just get for free? The ones that you have to pay for, somebody's going to have to pay for it. So how can I get those for free? Now, I know this may seem controversial, but I truly believe that you need to invest in yourself and invest in your career. After you've taken a look at those free courses and the free materials, materials and the free training and you've decided, hey, tech is something that I want to do. I suggest that you invest in yourself by utilizing things like Affirm or Klarna. If you go on the CompTIA store, they have an Affirm option that you can use to pay for the certification. Now, this gives you a 0% interest-free loan that typically you can pay off within four months. Now, I know everybody might not agree with that, but I myself have gone into debt to further my tech career. When I got a basketball scholarship and then I decided decided to quit the team, I had to then get student loans to pay for the rest of my college education. The grand total for my college education was $30,000, but my first job right out of school paid $72,500 a year. And within my first three and a half years of getting out of college, I grew my salary to $225,000 a year. So I would definitely say that those $30,000 worth of loans that came out to about $125 a month was worth it. Now, we're talking about certifications that are less than $400. This is something that can be easily paid off, so it should not deter you from getting into your career. People spend money on all kinds of things that really don't matter and don't help you further in life every single day. Now, again, this is just my opinion, but this is what I've done and it's worked for me and I've seen it work for so many other people. Another thing that people don't even consider is that once you land your first tech job, your employer will reimburse you for any other new certifications that you wanna get. So if you need to borrow some money to land a tech job that's then gonna get you to those high paying six figure tech roles, I don't see anything wrong with it. Having employers pay for your certifications and for your degrees 
is the cheat code. This is stuff that people literally do not talk about online. You want to get your foot in the door at these companies. So once you're in, everything else is completely covered. So it's okay to invest in yourself and to invest in your career, but you just have to know that you need to be 100% serious about it. So step number two, you want to focus on optimizing your job search. So that way you land a job as fast as possible. Honestly, this is the part where most people fail. Most people tend to give up before they even really get started on their job hunt. I see it all the time in my comments. I got this certification, I can't get any interviews. I got this certification, I still can't get any interviews. This doesn't work for me. I got all these certs and I can't get any interviews. I did this boot camp, I still can't get any interviews. Certifications alone are not the only thing that are gonna help you land a job. You need to make sure that your resume is optimized and tailored to the jobs that you're applying to so you actually hear back. And you also need to make sure that your LinkedIn is up to date as well. So then that way, when you're on your tech journey, you have different recruiters reaching out to you because they see that you're learning, they see that you're getting certifications. And if you network with these different recruiters, it's gonna allow you to be at the top of their mind when they have a job that fits what you're looking for. So let's take a step back and talk about the resume. When people think about tailoring resumes to every single job, the first thing that they say is, oh, that takes too long. I don't have time to do that. Well, we have AI now and you can use tools like ChatGPT to quickly tailor your resume to these jobs that you're applying to. So once you're on ChatGPT, here's the prompt that you can use to tailor your resume to the jobs that you're applying to. Here is my current resume. I am looking to transition into a tech role. I have attached my resume. Please tailor my resume to this job posting, okay? So what I'll do is just find um, a job posting really quickly. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do this one. So I'll copy this job description because a little bit more entry level-ish. Put this here, paste it, and then I'll grab one of my resumes. All right, upload the resume in, hit enter. All right, so here is the final result, right? So you have a resume with a professional summary, breaking down technical skills. Um, this is gonna be tailored to this job posting, right? It's, if you want it to be more detailed, you can always Always come in here and tell ChatGPT, hey, can you add a little bit more detail? Can you make this resume a bit more detailed? You could go back and do that. It will completely redo the resume and make it more detailed, right? So if that's something that you're looking for, you can do that. As you can see now, it added more bullets before it was like only two or three bullets for each one. So this is all you really need to do to tailor your resume to these jobs that you're applying to. If you're not tailoring your resume, your resume will not get picked up by the ATS system, which is the applicant tracking system. The next thing that you need to do while you're on your job search to land your first tech job is to be networking on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is super underrated. I see people sometimes don't even have a LinkedIn, so you're completely overlooking this opportunity. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, definitely go make an account on LinkedIn. All right, so now that we're on LinkedIn, what you wanna do is first, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, make sure you set up your LinkedIn profile, okay? So have all of that all set up, get your LinkedIn profile, profile set up. But what you want to do is come here and search for different tech recruiters. So if you search tech recruiter and then you click on post, you can either click on post or you can just look at people here and you can start following different people, right? So look at this. This is a Capital One recruiter. If I wanted to, I could hit follow here. So then that way she'll start to pop up on my main feed. So you can do that to find different tech recruiters, right? So look at this. Tech recruiter seeking software engineers, right? This is another person if I wanted to connect with them, I would. So try to find the tech recruiters that are filling the roles that you're looking for. So if you focus on connecting with at least five different tech recruiters per day, follow them and connect with them. But when you connect with them, send them a note as well, letting them know that you're transitioning into tech and you want to connect with them because you're working on your certifications and looking to break into the industry very soon. So if you add hashtag hiring as well to your search and then go to post, you will see a lot of different posts that come up where people are hiring, right? You'll also see people complaining, but you'll also find posts of people that are hiring jobs as well, right? So look, you see all these recruiters, right? Recruiter, recruiter. I don't know what they're hiring for, right? But it's all different types of recruiters, right? So this guy's a technical recruiter. You definitely wanna do this so that way you can find recruiters that are actually actively hiring. So connect with them, try to build some real relationships with them. And this way, when you go, 
go check your main feed, you will have a feed that's similar to mine. And as you can see, right, this is Camille. Um, I've known her for a little while now, but this is Camille. She's one of the recruiters, like always posting different tech jobs. So look at this, junior dev sec op engineer, fully remote, okay? This is what you can do to find different jobs on LinkedIn and to speed up your job search process so you can quickly get to that first tech job. So now that you have your certifications, you're on LinkedIn and you're tailoring your resume, the last step that you need to do is actually start applying for jobs. I am in the mindset of you need to apply to as many jobs as possible. When it comes to job postings, I'm not saying this to be discouraging, but 80% of job postings have already been allocated to somebody. They're just following company formalities and they have to post it online. So you want to apply to as many jobs as possible because it's gonna allow you to cast a wider net. I see a lot of people nowadays, they have too many stipulations and they have too many requirements on jobs that they actually wanna work. If you're somebody that's brand new to the industry and you only want remote jobs and you only want jobs with specific job titles or you only want jobs that are gonna pay you a certain amount of money, you are drastically limiting the jobs that you can apply to and it's going to take you even longer to find a job. Whenever I'm on my job search, I apply to literally everything and I have over 15 years of experience in tech and this works for me and I always land a new job within two weeks. Even for my students, the ones that do the best are the ones that apply to as many jobs as possible. When you're struggling to find a new job, a lot of time it comes down to the amount of jobs that you're applying to. Somebody that's applying to 10 jobs a day versus somebody else that's applying to one job a day is 10 times the effort. So if they're applying to 10 times the amount of jobs as you, they have a higher likelihood of landing a role. So aim to apply to 300 to 400 jobs per month and you will have a much higher chance of landing a role. So here's a look inside of my GovTech Blueprint community and here's one of my students actually landed four job offers in one week just by using these strategies. It took him a month of applying to jobs and he had four job offers come in all at the same same time. I'm telling you, applying to as many jobs as possible and increasing your volume is the difference between landing a job and not landing a job. And Damien is somebody that was getting extremely discouraged. He literally said in this post that he almost gave up, but he did not give up. He kept applying to jobs and it worked out for him and everything turned around and he got four job offers. So when it comes to getting a job in tech, most people give up before they even get any traction. If that's been you, I want you to start applying to jobs and start using all these strategies that I talked about in this video and then come back to me in 90 days and let me know what your update is. Anytime that you get a job rejection, just archive it and move on. Do not take it personally. I always say that if you aren't getting no's, you aren't even trying. So go out there and apply to as many jobs as possible. And if you're getting no's, that means you're making progress. All it takes is one yes to get a job offer. So here's a checklist that you can follow while you're applying for jobs. You need to make sure that you're applying to 10 jobs a day. You need to make sure that you're following up with at least two recruiters, whether you follow them or just reaching out to recruiters that you previously connected with. And you need to make sure that you're attending at least one networking event per month. Whether this networking event is in person or is virtual, you need to get out there and start meeting people that are in the industry. You never know where an opportunity can come from, but networking is the key to getting a job offer. And it beats out all of these strategies that I talked about. So there you have it, the complete blueprint of breaking into tech with zero money down. It might take 90 days, but this is a path that actually works. If you're serious about breaking into tech, take this blueprint and start today. The tech industry isn't getting any less competitive and it's never too late to get started. Plus, if you want to learn about how you can get a job in the most stable tech industry, click the video on the screen where I talk about how you can land a job in GovTech. I break down exactly how I went from $10 per hour to over $225,000 per year with complete job security in that video. So make sure you go watch it. It's the video on the screen right now and like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos.